The November 14, 2012 meeting of the Ascension Parish Planning Commission will now come to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, please note that our chairman, Mr. Burgess, is absent today and I will be acting as chair and that all other commission members are present. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with and uh, next on the agenda is introduction of staff. Uh, Patrice, we'll start with you. Patrice Johnson. Ricky Compton, Planning and Development Director. Michael Petty, Planner. Lance Brock, Zoning Official. Tim Ward, Engineering. <coughs> Ray Miller, Engineering Department. Laverne Bourgeois, Building Official. Thank you very much. Uh, next item is Chairman's comments, and I have no comments at this time, so we'll go to uh, item number six, public comment. Madam Secretary, has anyone signed up for the public comment? Okay, thank you very much. Item seven, approval or denial of the minutes of the October 12, 2000, October 10, 2012 Planning Commission meeting. Gentlemen, what are you, what's your pleasure? Move for approval. A second. I then move and second. Any objection? Okay, the minutes stand approved. Item number eight is a public hearing to approve or deny the following family partitions. A is the Walter M. Gilbert, Jr. property, lots GA1 through GA7, uh, W.J. Quintmont surveyors, and Council District 4. Is there someone here representing the petitioner? Good evening. Clint Quintmont, representing W.J. Quintmont surveyors. I ask for planning commission approval on the Walter M. Gilbert, Jr. family partition. There were uh, several comments made by staff. Uh, uh, can you all let us know whether those uh, comments have been addressed? Yes. Um, the first comment was that uh, there is an existing trailer as well as a shed and a dog pen that fall within the proposed uh, private access servitude. Uh, those are still located on the revised drawing uh, with a note that they will be removed. Our comment was that uh, they should be removed from the drawing and verification that they are removed before the plat is signed. Um, comment number two, uh, the applicant is requesting a variance for a 30-foot wide private mm -hmm. access servitude. Uh, that's half the, uh, uh, the, the width that's required uh, via the code. Uh, we feel that this is too narrow for the number of lots that are being created, and we feel like it needs to be wider. Uh, uh, can you tell us how much wider you feel it would need? I mean, you have something specific? Well. Of course, the, the code uh, calls for 60-foot width. Uh -huh. um, we feel like the 60-foot the width um, by, you know, being uh, required by the code could be less than that, uh, but we feel like the 30-foot uh, width that's, that's being applied or, or asked for for a variance is, is too narrow. Okay. Um, I guess where we stand is, um, you know, the code calls for 60 feet. You know, we felt like, uh, is, you know, if the commission uh, you know, was not comfortable with the 30 foot, then it needs to be wider. But uh, I guess there's some gray area in there maybe that, that could be discussed. Um, and then also uh, the applicant is requesting a variance for the elimination of a T turnaround. Uh, uh, we've uh, actually uh, in previous uh, family partitions uh, uh, limited that to a uh, properly constructed L turnaround and uh, we feel like that uh, is a you know, possibility for this this project as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments from commissioners? Comment. Yeah. In reviewing the code 174026, um, it specifies, and as staff has just alluded to, between 1 and 340, 1 to 5, 50 foot, 1 to 7, 60 feet. Now, but it, in requesting to eliminate that, well, it also stipulates that it it has to be at least 30 feet in width. So while our support staff is saying, it also makes a recommendation 40 to 60 feet. So I am not you know, in supportive of saying just eliminate, you know, looking at the recommendation 40 to 60 feet. And when it says specified, there are seven lots 
I understand looking at that, this is divvied up to. The recommendation there in the code is from one to seven sixty feet. So what I am saying is, you no, know, not in supportive of since the code specifies, depending on the number of lots, it makes a recommendation. Mm -hmm. But you say a minimum of thirty feet. There's no time code. will it be less than thirty feet. But when you look at the number of lots, the number of lots, one to seven says sixty as he as staff has alluded to. Minimum. If there was one to three, it would be 40. So if there's a range of 40, as he's suggesting, probably expand even 30 foot is too narrow, considering the circumstances. Right. That puts us back in the range of the 40 to 60 foot range. Right. Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, I don't know how we can get off of the fence here unless either the, the applicant uh, offers a, a width and uh, and the staff determines it's acceptable, or the staff recommends a width. I, um, this, this is just too vague, and we're, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with this. I'll Mark. address all those issues when you're ready. The trailer has been moved, um, and 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 if that wants to be a condition, you could do it. We, we do have proof. I have the uh, client here can verify that as well. Um, so the trailer has been moved. The, the reason for the uh, 30 foot is a consistence with the per current public road, Gilbert Road 30 foot, so we left at 30 foot. Um, if you go back and review plats that I've su submitted as well as other surveyors and engineers, <clears throat> the reason we started going to a minimum of 30 was so that these private servitudes wouldn't become public roads. And that was the point of keeping them small so that they didn't have the appropriate right of way and the council wouldn't be pressured to bring these into the public system. And so I personally, if you look at all my plats, have always used a minimum 30 to keep them private and not let them become public because obviously you know the road problem we have here in Ascension Parish and in taking in private roads is a bad, hard not a justified deal in order to work on our current road system. And so 30 has been a traditional width that I have used as well as other surveyors and engineers in order to keep them private. Uh, private driveway uh, which has an adequate width for drainage ditches on both sides of a road and the road being built uh, within that width. So that was the purpose of the 30 foot. There is an L turn on uh, G8A1, uh, 55 feet, 30 foot in width to for, for that purpose the client suggested that we put that on there to satisfy the planning department, although, you know, they didn't see a need for it, but they thought that would be a good idea in order to satisfy the planning, planning department's uh, comments. So you have addressed the first comment about the existing trailer and sheds being removed, and the third comment about the uh, T turnaround using an L turnaround. It's the second one where there's, there's an issue as far as uh, what we do. Okay. And I'm not sure why we wouldn't stay consistent with what the public road currently is, which is 30. Just because it's in the code. Because the code 1740-26 family partition, power A3, private access servitude shall be the following width. And it recommends 1 to 340, 1 to 550, 1 to 7, which there are seven lots, 60. Yes. And, and a minimum 30 foot is also in that code. And that's why we use the 30, because it's in there as a minimum in order to keep them private. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure my client, if he wanted to move it to a 40, I mean, I'm assuming he would agree. Uh, you know, I can discuss that with him, but, you know, we're talking about a private driveway here. You know, if we can want to become public, we can do that, because that was the, that was the, um, the intention or whatever, and I've had several discussions with the planning department in the use of that and currently working with the strategic planning in addressing this issue as well to hopefully get a unified width so that there's not the confusion of one to three, three to five, and five to seven. Would the staff be satisfied with 40 feet? We, we feel that the 40 would, would um, at least fall within the, the range of, of um, like what you were discussing, uh, we felt like the 30 was just, um, you know, too too narrow because of the number of lots. Um, um, you know, at this point, 60 is what's called for by the code. Uh, I feel like staff would be comfortable with 40. But it, 
what's what's bothering me is that it says a minimum of 30 foot for private servitude, uh, even if there is seven lots. Am, am, am I hearing that wrong? I think that it is saying in the code. The number of lots where it begins with 40, 50, 60. Right. <clears throat> but what about where does it state about the minimum of 30 foot? Said server to be less than 30 foot in no event. In no event. But that, that includes the one to seven, right? Does it? Well, I, my interpretation I it of it, 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 it's, it's stating that under no circumstances, you, we're talking about private access, am I correct? Right. Yes. That's under no all. circumstances will you deviate any less than 30 feet. Now it makes recommendations considering the number of lots. That's where the 40, 50, 60 comes in. But I feel like they're not deviating less than the 30 foot, especially going along with what was already there on the Gilbert Road that was existing. I don't know, am we've, I, am we've I looking at this wrong? conversations about this, have we not? A number of years ago, we put forth some revisions to the code to make all private access servitudes 30 feet. That was defeated at the council level, uh, along with several other revisions that we had looked at. <clears throat> I would argue in this case, because Michael and I have had several discussions about this particular property, that the 30 foot is just a little too narrow in the sense that you've got a ton of lots and it's going to be difficult to have cross traffic when you are completely <coughs> built out. Mm. Um, typically, the 30 feet is when there's a hardship or a reason why you can't make it wider. Yeah. These properties have plenty of depth. I think that 40 feet is a workable distance in there. The reason we didn't straight out give you guys a recommendation because the code does say 60. Yep. We typically do okay the, the variance down to 30. This is a lot of lots. Yep. Um, and Gilbert Road is a public road. It is currently a public road. It's currently publicly maintained. There's nothing that says Private we couldn't go it. back and say, uh, you know, in the future, this extension, so they're not going to come back and over. ask. Yeah. We've got rules sure. now that more or less prevent that from happening, but... <clears throat> the 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 number the the width based on the number of lots is somewhat arbitrary, but it does make sense. The more lots, yes. the, the wider the road should be. I, I would recommend if, if you could talk to your client now and go to 40 feet. I, yeah. I think we can resolve this. Good detail. <clears throat> yes, he agrees. So I would recommend uh, that we approve this uh, with that stipulation that the the um, the variance. Uh, for a 40 foot wide, uh, it would still be a variance, but it would be 40 feet wide would be, and in that the other uh, comments are addressed and then I would recommend approval of this. I would second Mr. Chafisi's okay. before, uh, before we, uh, we we vote on this, have any cards put in for a public comment on this? Uh, you'd like to make a comment? Yes. Well, come, come forward and identify yourself. Diane Adams and I live in Manchac Plantation, the boundary subdivision. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to tell Mr. Gilbert I think that he should be commended for his generosity towards his children and his grandchildren. They're very fortunate to have him as their grandfather to donate this land to them. However, our concerns are with drainage and the sewer. Our subdivision has had several houses that have already flooded with some massive rains. Our drainage is either inadequate or has issues, which I'm not sure what it is. My home, fortunately, has not been one of those that is flooded. However, we're going to be boundarying that property behind us, and I know what already happens during a heavy rain and how much water is already there. And my concerns are what is going to be done with the drainage issue? Are there going to be proper ditches dug? Are there going to be ponds for the drainage? I mean, this is not a development with a, a subdivision development where there's a developer that, can we, that we can hold accountable. If there's issues or anything, what are you doing to protect the already existing homes on that strip of land? And what's going to be allowed there? What are they going to do? Are they going to build homes? Is it going to be trailers? What's it going to be? Um, well, we, we have uh, faced this issue before in a family partition, and uh, the 
the power that we have is understanding. Uh, we we don't uh, deal with whether a family petition has an impact on drainage or, or things like that. Uh, we the code simply says, does it meet the qualifications of a family partition? Uh, am I correct, Mr. Compton? Is that yes, sir? The the just last month we dealt with this very right. issue in that um, the parish does not have ordinances that. Um, deal with individual lots of record and what they can do with fill uh, as far as bring it up. But what, th what we can do is if uh, there's existing drainage ways, if those drainage ways are blocked because of the development, then we can go in and, and clear them or have them cleared. Um, okay, so what you're saying is that once this property is subdivided that they can go in there and do anything that they want to if they decide that they want to go in and haul 50 million tons of soil in there and all of that runoff is going to impact our houses there's nothing that you can do about it there is nothing that this commission can do about it okay so if our houses flood because of of what's done on that adjoining piece of property <coughs> who's held liable or responsible for that uh, as, as it explained to us last month, I think it's an issue between landowners. It would be something if, if an adjacent Civil landowner land. does something that negatively affects your drainage, it would be a, um, a damages that you would have to collect from that so landowner. So there's nothing that the parish can do to protect the, the present homeowners? Well, this commission cannot, uh, as I understand it, cannot stop the family partition because of potential drainage impact. And I, you know, I don't want to stop it. I'm happy for the family that right. their, their grandfather is doing this for them and their father. It's just that we're concerned about what's going to happen to the existing homes right. and whether mm -hmm. we're going to get yeah. flooded or impacted or the sewer right. system's going to be up mm -hmm. to standard. Or, you know, are they going to be along the property lines in the back? Are they going to yeah. affect our homes and our, right. our existing livelihoods? That's what we're <coughs> concerned about. And what we were advised uh, last month when, when the issue came up is the best solution to this is for neighbors to get together and talk and, and, and be good neighbors. I mean, that's in terms of what we can do as a commission, we, you know, we can't force anything like that to happen. Okay. So as far as passing this, there's no way for us to know anything unless we just speak to the homeowners and see what they're intentions are with what they're going to be doing? They can do nothing to, to make any more water. They can't divert the water. You know, there's a Louisiana law that says that they cannot divert water onto your land. If they do, then you can sue them. <laughs> okay, so that's your response? Well, the, any develop, any, before there's any development on any of the lots, so they have to apply for a permit, a building permit. But there's what happens no drainage, when the, there's no ditches that are going to be dug or anything. Well, wait a minute. What what happens when a building permit is applied for? What do you look? What is the, what does engineering look at? Engineering does not review building plans. Oh well, who does? The building department. All right. And what does the building department look at? They look at building codes. Okay. And does that include drainage? No, sir. Okay. So when <laughs> would would drainage ever be looked at with respect to building anything on these lots? They're not. Okay. It's but if if the there's a uh, yeah. controls it. If there's a natural drainage ditch that is blocked in order to build a house, <coughs> the parish does not stop that house? If, if, if a drainage way is uh, blocked and it's identified to us, obviously by somebody who's concerned, then the parish goes out and determines whether or not the house being built caused the problem and then we sort of go after them to fix the problem. Or if it's an existing problem that's just been exacerbated by this new development and then we go out and we clean the ditches or, or do whatever we need to do. But as far as an individual lot of record that's been created in this parish, we don't monitor fill. And so, yeah, they could bring in a thousand truckloads of dirt and build this giant pyramid of dirt and put a house or a mobile home or whatever on top of it. As long as the drainage from that lot isn't exacerbating the drainage on your lot, I mean, we, we don't involve ourselves in that process. There's no code for us to enforce. There's no permit that's pulled that would tell us that, that they've done that. But you hold uh, developers to a, a higher standard. Yes. But and and we, we understand your concerns. Uh, we are, have not been given the authority to, to <coughs> act on that for a family partition. 
and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, obviously, the drainage issue in, in Manchac Plantation, and as far as holding developers accountable, obviously, this particular developer, due to this lady having problems, has not been held accountable. Maybe she needs to contact the, the uh, developer. In addition to what impacts has Manchac Crossing had on our property of my client and drainage and such issues? And maybe that's why it becomes a civil case and not a planning commission case. Right. Thank you. Any other questions, um, comments by commissioners? Uh, do we have a motion and a second on the floor? Yeah, I'll reiterate. Re uh, the motion. Repeat your motion, please. Uh, we approve um, this uh, family partition well, a with a. Uh, Mr. Compton? I have a quick yep. comment. That comment number three, mm -hmm. we talk about a properly constructed L turnaround. We know that they don't actually build the L turnaround, but on the plat map, we need to see both legs of the L. You know, a T turnaround actually looks like a T. Mm -hmm. An L turnaround needs to look like an L. It, it can't just be the driveway in and the L leg. It needs to have the other leg to allow the three-point turn. I mean, that's the whole point of the L turnaround is that you drive and then you back and then you come back out. Mm -hmm. Without this leg, you just drive in and then you don't have the room to do the other movement. Mm -hmm. And so what we're simply saying is the properly constructed, it needs to have the L end of it so before the plat is signed that you'll make sure that that's there as long as it's part of your motion well the, the motion includes your recommendations uh, one and three right so let's uh state the motion please well we recommend approval contingent on the comments being addressed and including a variance of 40 feet wide in lieu of 30 feet wide private access so um, all the other stipulations are in here, the, the properly constructed L turnaround and the removal of the trailer, trailer and shed. So I recommend, uh, removal based on, uh, I recommend approval based on those recommendations and that change uh, with respect to number two. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The motion carries, so we'll recommend approval of that family partition. <coughs> Next item is uh, a second family partition for Ray Schechneider Properties, LLC property, lots 3A, 3A, and 3A, 3B. And it's Mr. Quintlaw again. Again, asking for planning commission approval. Uh, Move that we approve. Motion that we approve from Mr. Bishop. I'll I'll second that motion. Second. Any, oh, any uh, public comments on this one? Um, Ms. Johnson? No, no one, a car? No public comments? Okay, um, so we've got a motion and a second to, uh, to uh, recommend I have a approval. I have a Mr. Trevisi? Uh, you asked for elimination of the T turnaround. That wasn't addressed in the staff comments. Are we just not requiring a T turnaround? Well, um, on this particular family partition, uh, the, the two lots that are being created as a part of the partition right. are existing construction with a shared driveway off of an existing private access servitude. So there's really no need there, for There's it. really no need for a T turnaround or an L or any other type of turnaround because of the situation right. of, of it just of wasn't the partition. mentioned, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Bishop. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay, Mr. Ori. Uh, any other questions, discussions? Uh, anybody opposed? Okay, consider that one passed. Uh, next item uh, was is passed over a public hearing to approve the deny the plat to Mossy Oak subdivision. That one has been pulled. Uh, the next one is the Gonzales Country Club property, track B1, and the dedication of Legacy, Legacy Oaks Lane. That's MR Engineering and Surveying LS, LLC. Good evening, I'm Mickey Robertson with MR Engineering and Surveying, and I'm here tonight representing the school board. The track B1 that you see before you is the site of what's under construction now as GW Carver uh, Elementary School, and all we're trying to get accomplished tonight is separating that piece out and dedicating Legacy Oaks Lane. Okay. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So the track B1 is south of that kind of curved line or is it the whole square it's the whole square oh, okay yes, sir
Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion by Mr. Nizo to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Callender. Uh, do we have any public comments on this one? No one signed up? Mr. Duplachan, you don't want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> when is that school going to be complete, you tell me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions, uh, discussions? Okay. So we have a motion second on the floor. Uh, any opposition? If not, uh, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item is... Uh, a public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the Parish Council of the following servitude revocation in Duvernay Subdivision, Lot 2A, to revoke the existing 15-foot drainage servitude that runs along the rear of Lot 2A. And again, we have uh, Mr. Quintmore. He's outside. Uh, this way. Oh, here he is. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is for to revoke the existing 15-foot servitude in Duvernay subdivision. Yes. There had been a rec recommendation to adjust the 15 instead of having the servitude on the current ditch control on the south side of the, of the, of the lot. There's no drainage structure or anything within that 15-foot drainage servitude. The relocation of it, to me, is what I, I really cannot understand because it's flat. There's no drainage structure there. <coughs> I'm not sure. When we used to do 15 foot in the rear of all lots, it was for the purpose of possible drainage, whatever. They finally decided to discontinue that practice because now we had thousands of these 15 foot drainage servitudes all across the parish that went nowhere <coughs> and were on no ditches. Already, a property to the north has revocated theirs and done away with it without relocating it. And to have it relocated on this property, I'm not sure why, because it's a lawn. And there's no ditch there. The ditch is, of course, on the side. And all the lots to the north all go in and drain into the roadside ditch. Um, if you need further explanation of drainage or whatever, my client is also here and can give you a better idea of, uh, you know, how it naturally <coughs> drains. I'm just not sure why they want to relocate it. And this, that was a recommendation by the Department of Public Works? It was. <coughs> Which lots north of this lot had their servitude revoked already? Lot 3, no. further up? Yeah, um, my name is Mark Berthelot, and um, I was asking to go ahead and have the same um, revision done on my um, servitude, I guess, also, because there's property to the north of me from Stephen Bateman, who also had the same thing done for his. And basically, when I went ahead and asked for this, I just drew the line directly attaching the two. I don't know if you have a map to show it. But. Yeah. Um, on here, here, here's the lot uh, for Bateman, who did away with his. What he did is he did essentially what Mark has done and extended his property back in order to build a shed. And so he did away with his 15 without any relocation because there was no, there was no reasoning for the location because there's no drainage structure there. And so obviously you can see here and on, on the map itself here that the drainage structure exists to the south of the lot here with the appropriate drainage servitude and there's no drainage structure here. And so to relocate it right here, I'm not sure why, because there's no, no ditch there. There's no drainage there. It's lawn. Uh, I don't quite understand why. By relocating the, ser the servitude, <coughs> would that uh, allow you then to build what you want to build? I mean, would, that would do that? Yes. Right? Yes, it would. Uh, w would it harm you in any way to have it relocated, or is it just a, a, a question of why? Yeah, that was our question. Yeah, why? Why, why would it need to be there if it's, okay. there's no drainage whatsoever? It's just there's no transition between the properties whatsoever now. <coughs> well, I guess what we're asking is what is the purpose for it? There's nothing there. You have a comment? Mr. Callender? 
the code 1740338 oh, addresses servitudes, and it states minimum servitude for any purpose, seven and a half feet either side of the property line for a total of 15 feet. Now, I guess my concern is how do we not look at that unless there's some subsequent language to modify that under certain conditions that we waive that? But I just quoted the code. Yes, there's also seven and a half feet either side of the property line for a total of 15 feet. Well, I understand your concern, sir, mm -hmm. but how do we not address that? Maybe the thing to do is some additional language, table of discussion on that. Mm -hmm. But I reviewed the code. I saw mm -hmm. no language that allows for. When I reviewed this, mm -hmm. I saw no language that allowed for close my eyes to when the code says have to have the 15 feet. This is where the code gets a little fuzzy. There's another, there's an ordinance in there. Uh, the code of the drain of servitude is dependent upon the size of the ditch. And that drain of servitude starts from the top of bank. And if it's less than 20 feet, it's 10 foot on each side. That's also in the code. And that's where we got a little, little code displacing, a little code confusion there. So we can quote one thing, but, but we have to, in another part of the code, we have something different. And that's what we have here. We have, a, we have code where on this particular ditch, it's 10 foot from the top of bank because it's less than the needed side for 15. And so that's where the code gets a little shaky. And, and, that's, and that's one of the things we're working with strategic planning to clean up and clear up is some of these code confusions. I then my concern is, would, would it hurt? that if we clear this controversy, modify the language at some point and come back, because, okay, I didn't see the part that you're mentioning, but let's say there is some contradiction in terms in the code. At some point, I think we need to clear that, because we're going to be applying these same things again somewhere up the road, sure. and there's going to be a contradiction of language, and I would ask that maybe either staff intervene, give us some guidance, or consider modifying the code for these particular circumstances. Uh, Com comment back on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I would, I, would, I would like to get you involved with some of the strategic planning meetings. So obviously you studied the code and so that you can have your input in these meetings as well so that you can be informed of, of some of these changes we're looking to make and clear up because obviously there's, there's quite a few. And I guess the concern for me, I, it's good while we're hearing now that some strategic planning meetings that I may be invited to, all I have is the code. When I'm reviewing these particular re requests, I have the code there. And I review it, and my concern is I don't know how I avoid what the code says, 15 feet. There's no language <coughs> to clarify if, if it doesn't apply this time or something else applies. So my concern is it appears to me, yes, You've stated a controversy in language there, mm -hmm. contradiction in language. Then appealing to staff here, help out here. Do you see something that allows for us to overlook what the code says, or does the circumstances warrant some modification in language to address what the gentleman is saying? Well, there, there, there may be uh, an issue here where some language should be modified in the future, but I don't feel like there's a direct contradiction in the code. Uh, the 15-foot uh, servitude requirement is, is placed upon when a lot is created. And what uh, Mr. Quitman is talking about as far as the other servitudes for uh, uh, up to or a minimum of 10 feet is actually for existing ditches, and it's based on the top of bank of existing ditches. So there's really not um, a contradiction of the code. <coughs> it, it's, it's two different applications of a servitude, and, and depending on what what is actually uh, it's applying to, not that one contradicts the other. Um, in, in this situation, our, our drainage engineer evaluated the site based on uh, his data for drainage <coughs> patterns and, and, and various, and of course his letter is attached to uh, the application. Uh, he felt as though removing the servitude uh, could adversely affect something you know, upstream from the natural grade in the area, of course, uh, that may or may not be the situation. I mean, even though there's not an existing ditch there, there's still existing drainage patterns to be uh, considered. And of course, if the servitude is removed and you know something is constructed in that servitude, I, I guess ultimately it could alter those drainage patterns. And I think that was his concerns with the request. Okay. So the, um, the um, engineer has 
not uh, in, in general when when uh, someone wants uh, servitude revoked if there's no objection from any of the parties concerned it can be granted by this commission in this case there is an objection and he will make an exception if you agree to uh, shift the servitude over otherwise he would have an objection and I, I, I don't know that this commission would be at this point willing to override his objection and grant that so um, as it stands the recommendation to us is uh, to grant the uh, the change in the servitude, the, the, the moving, which would allow you to uh, do the construction that you wanted to do. Uh, any other questions, comments? We have a card on this, uh, Ms. Johnson? Okay. Any other just, public comments? Just one comment. I, the engineering department ha should be always hesitant to revoke a drainage servitude but they've tried to accommodate the situation by shifting it over, and it seems like a reasonable solution. It may not be what you'd like to see, but it, it seems reasonable under the circumstances. Until something else changes in our codes, that, that would allow this. So I would, I would suggest that you, you consider his recommendation. We can approve this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. <coughs> um, Chair will now entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move approval of, of the, not of the revocation, but uh, approval of the. No, let's see. How do we? How do we work relocation? This? The relocation of it. Yeah. You're 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 recommending approval to the parish council. So make that right. Yeah. You're, okay. Yeah. Of course. Always, but we're not recommending approval of the revocation of the servitude, just of the relocation of the servitude. So uh, we'll recommend to the council that they that uh, they approve. Uh, the relocation of the servitude as shown on the plan. Uh, okay, it, may, may, it may be better to, to recommend, uh, mm -hmm. just thought, Mr. Chapeza, mm -hmm. just to recommend uh, the revocation of the servitude with the stipulation that the relocation is acceptable. If that, is whatever the proper thing? language is, yeah. we can do okay. it that way. The intent is right. to be supportive of the engineering department's recommendation. Right. And right. Comments. Right. Okay. So that is your motion? That's my motion. Okay. Second? <laughs> you get that. I'll second it. All right, Mr. Nizo seconds. Any other discussion? Uh, any opposition to the motion? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next item is item 11, a site plan review, light industrial development standards uh, from the C CKB LLC Corporation, J.J. Weems. And uh, as I understand it, this is... Uh, okay, Mr. You're Mr. Weems. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Weems. Um, this is a speculative construction, uh, light, light industrial, commercial office warehouse building, Highway 73 near Highway 30. Okay. Um, we did two there about a year and a half ago. Just one more identical to it. Okay. So. All right. And I, I see that staff recommends approval of this review. Any questions from commissioners? Mm -hmm. Any public comments on this one, uh, Ms. Johnson? Okay. I will entertain a motion. Move for approval. Mr. Calendar moves. I'll second the motion. Mr. Bishop seconds. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Thank you, General. <coughs> uh, number 12, item number 12 has been removed from the agenda of the public hearing to remove denial of. Uh, uh, private road to be accepted into the maintenance system. Uh, so we'll go to item number 13, a public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the parish code, uh, parish council amendments to the parish unified land development code. First is appendix four, section 17408C2 and 17409E, testing for compliance of specifications. And we have a Recommendation from staff on that? This is the ordinance uh, that you uh, heard uh, last last month. It's coming uh, to you again. It's basically just a clarification of the pro process and the timing of the quality control okay. uh, that goes on in mm -hmm. for our subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And it's as we discussed it last month. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. there's been no changes. Right. Anybody that has anything to say? Any uh, public hearing, public comment cards? Ms. Johnson? Come on up. I 
Bill, I call it Billy Aguilar. This is the same thing that we talked right. about two or three months ago. Yeah. And I just want to thank uh, uh, Ricky and Ben and Tim, uh, Mr. Laverne. We all went through the, the documents and created what we think is a, is a good ordinance that will require the testing. It will be an ordinance now. Okay. Uh, and it requires and it specifies what tests are required now. So there's no question about it. Yeah. It's required by ordinance. We have to do it. So I think we worked so out a good, a good all ordinance. Your I think everything's okay. okay. Mr. Right, Aguilar, I thank them for all the cooperation. Yeah. I want to yeah. thank you for your input on this, too. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. Your time and input. All right. Uh, other comments? Public comments? Um, questions of the commissioners or comments? I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. <laughs> Mr. Second Callen that. moves. Mr. Ori seconds. Any objection? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item is. Uh, Appendix 4, add a mortgage verification section. I was uh, uh, consulted by our uh, legal advisor that we uh, remove this from the agenda for the time being. Uh, that some more study. There's some issues that, that uh, need to be addressed before we take action here. So uh, we'll be removing that item from the agenda. Uh, agenda item 14 is the staff report. To go over the uh, the projects that we have going on, there are still uh, three subdivisions that are in the bond period now, where the infrastructure has been completed, uh, final plat, plat has been approved, and they put a a bond on the project for a certain amount of time to make sure the roads uh, hold up. Okay. So at this time, we still have there are three uh, subdivisions in the bond period. And once that comes into our system, that's another 211 lots. Uh, there are four subdivisions that are under construction. The, the roadways and drainage are under construction now. Uh, once those are all completed, that'll bring another 369 lots into the, into the system. Uh, uh, there are one subdivision that has been approved they haven't started construction on it actually they've it was done in four <coughs> phases they've complete they've completed the first phase they're working on the second phase and two phases are still in in the planning uh, so they've been approved for planned and that's going to be another 103 lots and then we're working on approving of uh, the plans on two other subdivisions which is another 227 lots Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, item 15, engineering staff report. That was that. Oh, oh, that was engine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, item 16, adjourn. I'll entertain a motion. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any objection? Okay. Meetings adjourned. We will have the. Uh, we'll take a 10-minute recess and have the zoning commission meeting uh, at. 6.55.